Okay, here we are at Lock Auction. This time we're previewing our pre-Christmas slash holiday sale. It's on December the 6th. Previews are Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday from noon to 6 p.m. prior. We are absolutely loaded, so don't miss it. Lots of everything. And without further ado, I'm gonna start a lot of stuff. So here we go. Okay, starting here, we have one lot of quite a lot of Thomas Moser furniture came out of the city. This is a Thomas Moser sign table and five chairs. Nice patina on it. Over here on our mid-century section, these are in the style of Paul Evans, look good heavy weight, nice lines on them with the metal. Metal comes right up the back as you'll see. Nice pat patinated metal. Here, also mid-century, we have this rosewood, I believe it's called a matchbox desk. Look at that wonderful maple inside. This lamp opens up. This opens up and it turns into a drop down. Anyway, you can go to clarkny.com and get full details on that. This wonderful bronze here is actually in our next sale, which is on January, so just shows you how much crystal and how quickly stuff is coming in. Right here, this is one of a pair of Seven Light Tiffany Studios Lily, la, lily Pad lamps. Had a gilded uh, bronze patina, the patina is slightly worn. The other, this is one of a pair. We have all the shades for this one. The other one's missing about three shades. One shade is slightly as is, but we have a pair of them. I believe they're estimated 20 to 30,000. Over here, in the Irish style, we have this table. Look at the nice heads in it, nice claw foot. Wonderful patina, nice lines. Possibly a replaced marble at one stage. We have a lot of marble sculpture from the city in this sale. Right here, look at the size of it. This is by a good Italiano called Pasquale Romanelli. Nice big size, nice patina on that. One of quite a few bronzes, so right here, these are wonderful, nice size. Still got nice uh, coloring in the paint, these two Venetian blackamoor stools. Nice with the little upholstery on top of them. Good for our decorator clan. Here, as always, we have two Steinways in this sale. One is an upright and one is this ground, this Model L. We'll get our reviews from uh, Faith Lieberman when she comes in and plays it, so we'll let you know then. Over here, this is by uh, Frilly. The artist Frilly, we have two, uh, the sculptor Frilly, good large size, look at that nice big marble bust. We have two by this artist in the sale. Over here on the floor, before we go through, we have a nice Picasso little uh, tapestry, our little uh, hanging. A lot of interest in this. Speaking of musical, not only do we have uh, pianos, but we have this good 1973, I believe, Fender Jazz Bass, wonderful condition. Still with the original hard case. A lot of interest in this, so you can come in and view that during the previews. Here, this here is by, once again, by Frilly. Nice big size, young girl. Below that is Stickley Audi. Nice inlaid, I believe it's by Harvey Ellis Original but it's a reproduction by Stickley Audi into the main room and look at this, absolutely loaded. As we speak, 600 lots, but we add lots every day of the week. Okay, running along with the porcelains. We have lots of Royal Crown Derby Amore Amari porcelain. This is just one lot. Atop that, we have Sevs, Parian porcelains. This is Rosenthal. This is Genori. Royal Copenhagen or Copenhagen into this little cabinet here. Look at the size of this, absolutely wonderful. All signed Tiffany Favril vase. This sculpture is by the Haas brothers. Here we have more Royal Crown Derby, Asian. There's the second of the pair of Tiffany lily pad lamps. Here we have this wonderful little bronze. It's by Jean Lambert Rookie. Nice, wonderful patina on it. Here, this bronze is by Satchmo. It's by an artist called Akira. Look at the wonderful patina, very nice bronze. Check that out on the website. Here we have a collection of plates by Royal Copenhagen, Flora Danica. I believe we have 12 of them. Next to it, two pieces of Genori, very rare Khadiv. We have a lid of Turin and a Taza. Meissen figurine, slightly as is. Possibly Meissen here. Sounds a little lot of boxes. Here we have Santa Clara pottery. This is by Narant, I believe. Below here we have Sang de Boeuf. More Asian vases. More Royal Crown Derby here. Lots of it, different lots, so check it out on the website. Here we have a collection of German porcelain figurines. We have lots of clocks. This is a beautiful little Tiffany clock back here with the gilded bronze and the enamel. Right here, quite a rare little clock by Caldwell. It's a repeater. 
We have ship's slugs, we have bronze urns, more bronze slugs. Running up the furniture now. This here, I believe, is a stickly Audi. Nice mid-century style table with a circle base on it. Here we have more mid-century with the metal base. We have this, I believe it's a ship's binnacle or a ship's clock. Here we have actually very nice, nice big large size came from Locust Valley, a uh, linen wrapped Carl Springer table has leaves on it. Set of nice, uh, good heavyweight leather upholstered chrome chairs. A top here, a wonderful little uh, mid-century table here with like nearly like a brutalist floral, floral shape. Moser furniture here. We have this rare and very large piece of Delft porcelain, some slight age chips on the bottom, on the top of it. Look at the size of that. A lot of interest in this. Once again, lots of carved furniture in the sale. These pair are back in. We have Meisen porcelain. Here we have this wonderful Italian Verguena. Look at the carving on this. This came from a Western Connecticut estate. Carved all over. Beautiful with the doors and the drawers. Really nice piece, iron line, and big lock like that. Okay, we have some French 18th century furniture, Swedish bomb, commode, marble top commode here. Here again, once again from Western Connecticut, this absolutely wonderful Italian, looks like a walnut commode with all the heads as handles. On top of this, we have this um, with the secret lock on the back of it for the drawers. Not having a lot of luck with all this stuff today, and we're not even gonna try this little button back there. You press that, it releases the drawers up. Beautiful mirror up here. This is a large pair of esconces. Nice with the ribbon on the top. Horns, all sorts of decoration on it. We have this wonderful pair of patinated and gilt bronze urn form lamps with the ram's heads on them. 19th century, really wonderful quality. Here, we have a set of four of these. I'm just showing you a pair, but look at the gilding on this and the quality of the work. Really, really nice. Atop this, a nice I would say Italian Rococo style mirror. Below this, we have a pair of these Adam style consoles. In the sale, this actually came from the same hat as the Irish style console, a pair of these wonderfully carved Chippendale style chairs, really nicely carved. Here, a large chandelier. This also came from Western Connecticut. We believe it to be Baccarat. Look at the size of that, the quality silver metal or silver bronze, whichever it is. Nice skeleton form here. Bronze figural chandelier with the topless uh, angels in there, just as you want to see your angels early in the morning. Here we have a pair of these English tavern tables. Used to get a lot of these years ago. It's the first I've seen in a long time. We have a pair of them with the nice marble tops. This pair, we have a pair of these mid-century. Leather upholstery, look at that wonderful yellow leather upholstery, swivel chairs. We go right down this line quickly. It'll just uh, confuse our cameraman here. There's the second of the pair. We have this brass tea cart. Nice sarin and table. Nice pair of, you know, sort of art decor, but look at the upholstery on those are the frills. We have this console table. It has one drawer. It also has a big mirror. Lacquered came from Locust Valley. Sitting on top of it, look at that wonderful Japanese uh, antique porcelain fishbowl, as is, but very decorative and nice. Two more bronzes, or two more marbles, rather, from that collection in the city. Below it, a nice Harris carpet. Here we have a wonderful pair of silvered Venetian carved shell form chair and table. Look at the carving and the quality in these. Once again, go to C-L-A-R-K-E-N-Y to see measurements, etc. on these. Be alongside them, a pair of Art Deco, sort of calamander or nice wood chairs. We have this nice marble coffee table with the brass stretcher. I believe it's by Richard Simmons. Here we have a nice, look at the size of this, nicely carved frame porcelain enamel decorated plaque. Floral decoration with the landscape in the middle. Here we have Stickley Audi settle. Nice slatted frame on it. One of two, we have a chair as well as this. We have lots of nice marble top Asian furniture. Here we have a Moser bookcase. Look at the wonderful with the dovetailing on the top of that. Great patine on it. This beautiful marble, a great holiday present or a Christmas present. Little girl sits atop a pedestal. Really nice quality with the two colors. This is quite a, for a lot of this, uh, interest in this artist here, it's Hiram Powers or Hiram Powers. This came from the city with all the other marbles. Okay, we're gonna slip up the middle here. Here we have 
Wonderful pair of French bergeres. Nice sort of nearly ceruzed frames on them. Downfilled, one of my favorite lots in the sale. Okay, on the carving groupings. Okay, this is a, probably a Horner table. It's not, we didn't see a sink trap, but you have a china cabinet table, six leaves. Only has three chairs, but it has a large server, all original patina, estimated only six to 900 for everything. Here we have a great pair of lion finial end, end irons. And behind it, look at that uh, screen with the horse and carriage and the, the inn. Okay, so much stuff, it's hard to concentrate. Here we have a nice pair of high back, I believe they're baker chairs, nice upholstery with the wing arms on them. Nice Saru carpet on the floor there. I'm gonna have Kenny, who is new to the auction, talk about a few carpets in a while, just to get him used to it before we throw him into the fire. Nice pair of these benches. Okay, this is the sideboard that came with the uh, Horner style set. We have a pair of these shell form consoles, very decorative, nice composition with the faux faux marble or faux wood tops on them. We have this harvest table. We have a set, I believe, of nine of these, and these are J.M. Young. Nice original mission chairs. Nice with the original leather upholstery. Baker table there. Here we have a, I would say, a, you know, pagoda style, Asian style, Asian modern style chandelier. Bronze chandelier here. Okay, and here we have the Cedric Hartman lamp, nice original patina, part of our mid-century collection. And as I said, we have plenty of carved furniture. Look at this wonderful chair, look at the back of this with the shield and carved all over. Full griffins on the side. We also have a desk with full griffins on it in the sale. In the same mode, except in, an a in a Asian. We have this uh, highly carved settee, the carved with dragons on the back and on the arms. We'll have a quick wander into the back room. Just to give you an idea of the volume of stuff we have, it is incredible that we've managed to put this together in four weeks. Louis XV1 style, Berger there, not Berger, excuse me, a planter. This is a Baker commode here. Nice Dutch, or a nice, excuse me, I'm losing all my countries here. This is a nice Welsh cupboard. I should know that playing rugby with them all the time. Over here, a wonderful, speaking of full-size griffins, look at that one. On this desk, no sign, but in the Horner style, we've got siren and tables, chandeliers, Italian desks, trunks, inlaid furniture, Italian furniture. You name it in the back room, we have it. Do come and view the sale, it's a don't miss. And here we have this all original horse. This came from Hudson, New York. We believe it's Denzel. We believe it's a center horse, as they say on the uh, carousel over here on the left a beautiful beautiful original patina victorian three-door bookcase in walnut getting to the home straight i'm glad to say this here i believe is by raphael pear p-e-y-r-e -E, french artist once again from the collection in the city here one of one of the three pianos we have this we have this white lacquered yamaha yamaha and here the second, also from the same estate, Steinway. And before we finish, I have to point out, they're sort of in the style of Paul Evans, with very Italian feel with the nice parquetry looking wood and the three-dimensional feel with the mirror center. Nice large size, as you can see here. Okay, over there, there's plenty of porcelains. We have this Surtout de Table. Great, great quality. Silver plate top on it. Can't take a piece off you can see. Let me just show you the quality on this. Oh, nearly dropped the mirror. Good man there. That wouldn't have looked well for the consigner. Look at the base on that. Really nice three-piece. Fits in nicely. Okay, once again, we have this, uh, I believe this is Moser, actually, this square. You would call it a cube chair. And without going in, oh, let me just finish with this. Laverne coffee table. It's a Chan table. Nice patina, nice original. Came from Western Connecticut. Now, before I make any more blunders, I'm going to finish with that. I'm going to hopefully see you here during the previews, which are Thursday, Friday and Saturday from noon to 6 p.m. Come earlier if you feel like it. If I don't see you, have a wonderful holiday, wonderful Christmas. Thank you for all your business in the last year. Stay healthy. See you at the weekend. 
Hi and welcome to our preview of Asian Arts for the December 6th auction. From on our Walk in Wednesday appraisal days, this is a beautiful um, print of a crab and flowers. It's signed. This is estimated at three to five hundred. It has not been examined out of the frame, but the consigner was given this as a gift and it's really quite attractive. Moving on to two pieces of blue and white Chinese pottery in this auction. This came out of a local estate. Um, this beautiful tulip vase. Um, blue and white with figures and birds and flowers. Unfortunately, there has been some a few repairs. And then this other beautiful um, blue and white vase um, with flower decoration. Nice age to this piece, the two together at 400 to 600. Here we have a silver wire inlaid bronze sensor. It is signed to the underside. Um, and it is really quite nice at 1,000 and 1,500. We have this from a local Stamford estate. It is a carved jade belt buckle with a dragon, and it has been repurposed as a letter opener, and this is estimated at six to 900. Um, absolutely wonderful, came in uh, early last week. Um, this is a carved jade pendant, but if you take a look, it is carved all the way through multi-tiers and it is depicting animals. So these are some kind of mythological beasts amongst foliate, and it's accompanied by this little figural finial. Really beautiful at four to 600. And also is this 14 karat gold uh, jade pendant, and it is depicting uh, peach blossoms. And again, it's carved th throughout and has these beautiful color variations at three to 500. Again, from a walk in Wednesday appraisal day a few weeks ago, is this pair of Fami Verit Chinese Enamel decorated porcelain plaques. Um, they are depicting birds and flowers and has this millefiori border of yellow. Um, and I would imagine that there's, there's an additional percentage of border that you cannot see. They have not been examined out of the frames, but they're right, really quite lovely at three to 500. Here we have a lotus enamel decorated Chinese bowl absolutely beautiful colors on this piece. So the teal interior and then these yellow and, and maroon colors to the exterior. Really quite nice with this enamel work. Blue and white bowl, flower decoration to the exterior, stand, um, inscribed to the underside, and the interior also has a dragon with pearl. We have this iron red gilt decorated ginger jar with butterflies and flowers. Again, from one of our walk on Wednesday appraisal day, the double ring to the underside, and this is at three to 500. We have this Wukai ginger jar. Um, it is probably Kang Z. Really nice age to this piece, so you can take a look at the underside. And also, if you just want to take a peek, just so you can see the clearly the age of this piece at the opening diameter. Uh, really nice condition still. Um, nice enamel work with the figures and the flowers and it's on this carved wood base with this carved wood lid. We have two vases. These are blue souffle or powder blue. Two separate lots but similar stylistically. The two baluster vases, this is from both from Manhattan Estates but different sources. Um, but equally beautiful, this one has really nice form to it. It has been drilled as a lamp but it has a double ring to the underside at four to 600. We have this Song de Boeuf um, red vase, Chinese, from a Manhattan estate. You can see that it has been drilled as a lamp. There is a base to this. I just don't have it present at the moment, but I can see it, so it is present. Um, and this is at 400 to 600 out of a Manhattan estate. We have this um, glazed pottery jug. This is probably, it has really nice age to it. It's probably Song Dynasty. So this is individually lotted. This is back in from a previous sale from a bad bidder. So it's a beautiful blue and white ginger jar, substantial size, nice condition with a lid. And it's really on this wonderful gilt decorated base. Um, and this is really wonderful. And we've had a fair amount of interest in this piece. Beautiful, I, okay, so I wasn't going to do this, but I'd like you to see the underside. So I'm going to just lift this up for a moment so that you can take a peek. So if you just want to see the nice age to this piece, um, really just a beautiful and a nice size. And the stand is really just perfectly fit for this item. So that is in our December 6th auction and I hope that this sells well because it's lovely. Um, we have this pair of um, enamel decorated vases. So this is a Chinese, um, English style for the, that was made by the Chinese. So it's kind of um, the scene of little blonde girls or ladies um, amongst this Chinese style. 
these two together at four to six hundred. We have this Fami Vert vase of children playing, really beautiful with the calligraphy verso. And if you want to take a look at the underside, nice age to this piece again, the beautiful handles. Um, we have this bronze deity. So again, really quite lovely. So nice quality, nice condition. Um, clearly a nice age to this piece. And again, from the same estate as our Sung de Boeuf and one of the powder blue vases is this Japanese uh, Satsuma Jardinier or flower for flowers. Um, so we have the Keelin handles. We have fish to the interior. Um, there has been significant repairs to this piece, but it's really quite beautiful. The enamel work is really nice. We have a set of six carved rock crystal cups or bowls with the little pedestal bases. One has been repaired, but they're really quite beautiful. And here we have a Fu Chao Sha Shaun lacquered vase. Beautiful gilt decorated and then this little seam. Um, the stand does have a repair to one foot, but it's really quite lovely and it's stamped to the underside. And this is a Junyao blue glazed fish vase. So the spout is the fish's, the fish's mouth, sorry about that. Um, and it's really in nice condition. This came in on one of our Walk on Wednesday days. We have this pair of Chinese Fami Vert um, enamel decorated bowls with the chrysanthemums and the butterflies. And they do have Kang Z marks to the underside. So these are really quite nice at two to 3,000. And we have this bronze sensor with the Foo Dog finial, the elephant legs. Um, it is quite nice, it is signed. So the underside of the, I don't know if you can get in there and see that, but it is signed right here. There are plenty of images on our website and it's just a beautiful bronze sensor. And this is actually, this table screen is one of my favorite lots in this auction. It's absolutely stunning. The frame is nicely carved. We have this interior scene with the Millefiori border and it's just really nice, like a nice partnership just between the plaque and the screen itself. So this is beautiful at eight to 1200. All right, and last but not least for our December 6th auction, we have this beautiful lacquered altar table. Um, nice age to it, it's probably 19th century. Um, just a nice size, a, a petite version of the usual altar tables. And this is estimated at three to 500. And we hope to see you on December 6th for some holiday shopping. Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name's Kenneth and I have a few rugs that I'd like to share with you today for our upcoming auction. The first is going to be this exquisite Chinese Art Deco rug. First off, I have never seen colors like this before in this particular style of rug, nor have I seen a pattern like this. The pile is truly nice. I believe this to possibly be a Nichols carpet. You're not gonna see another one like this for some time to come. Beautiful golden hues, fuchsias, greens, purples, you name it, it has it, ladies and gentlemen. The second rug I'd like to show you today is this lovely room-size Saruk carpet. Just beautiful. Take a look at these colors. It has an open field design, lovely pattern yet again. And look at this pile. A little bit of wear, but not too bad. Probably from the 1920s. A great piece to have in any home. Ladies and gentlemen, the third and final carpet that I'd like to share with you today is this lovely Harise rug. Now granted, it has a lot of character, but with that said, look at these exquisite colors. Truly bright, vibrant, still a lot of life left in it. Lovely pattern. And with that said, those are all of my carpets for today. We have about 30 of them approximately in this upcoming sale. I can't wait to share them with you. Thanks. Hi, Will Schweller here to discuss some of the highlight fine art lots in Clark Auction's December 6th sale. Starting here with this nice oil on canvas by the Western painter Gary Ernest Smith. Smith, a uh, still living artist, focuses a lot on Western landscapes, particularly agrarian landscapes. This is a, a painting of a wheat field. Uh, I really love the, the line of trees. You kind of get a sense of like a hazy summer day. The painting has a two to $3,000 estimate comes out of a private collection in New York. Above it, we have one of my favorite lots in the sale, a nice screen print by the 
late artist Jacob Lawrence. Lawrence is, uh, needs no introduction, one of the most important 20th century American artists and certainly one of the most important 20th century African American artists. This print here from 1986 depicts the Schomburg Library. I love the guy with the, his arms full of books. What makes this particular edition 181 out of 200 uh, interesting is that the work is dedicated to, to Abram Hill. Uh, Hill was a playwright uh, who actually passed away in 86 uh, and was probably most notable for founding the American Negro Theater up in Harlem, uh, which was in the 40s a really prominent venue for African American playwrights and actors to perform work. Sliding down here, we have a lovely gouache by the American artist Jane Peterson. Peterson, uh, like um, Lawrence, is a really significant artist, um, one of the more notable female painters of the early half of the 20th century. Um, what sort of distinguishes her from a lot of her female contemporaries is her focus on scenes outside of the domestic. She traveled wildly in Europe. Uh, here we have what I presume to be a Venetian scene. And really, um, you know, is working sort of post-impressionist style with a lot of influence from, from European modernism. This work comes out of a private collection in Long Island and has a six to $9,000 estimate. Above it, from a Connecticut collection, we have a lino cut by the uh, Puerto Rican artist uh, Angel Botello. Botello is known for these, this is sort of his trademark style of depicting figures. Here we have a mother and child. This work comes out of a Connecticut collection with a six to $900 estimate. Sliding down here from the same collection as the Peterson, we have this marvelous oil on canvas still life by the 17th century Roman painter Michelangelo Campidoglio, uh, also known as, as Michael Pace. He's best known for his still lifes of fruit. Uh, here we have melons and berries, plums perhaps. Um, and, and a lot of his painting features these sort of antique architectural elements. He was, I understand, pretty popular uh, among English collectors in the 17th century, and this work, like I said, comes out of a Long Island collection. Uh, we have it as attributed to, because it is not signed, but, but is very much of his style, with a five to $7,000 estimate. Here, from another Long Island collection, we have a Romeo Tabuena uh, oil on board landscape, uh, probably Philippine landscape, Tabuena being a Philippine artist. We've sold his work pretty regularly here in the past few years. This piece from 1964 has a 15 to $2,500 estimate and, and just a really marvelous palette. I mean, lovely pinks and purples. Above it, we have a nice oil on board from an Upper East Side collection by the American uh, sort of impressionist painter Howard Hildebrandt. This is a park scene, which I think has really charming details, man reading a newspaper, a child on a pram, a great period park scene comes out, like I said, of an Upper East Side collection. It's one of the two Hildebrandt works we have in the sale and has an eight to $1,200 estimate. Here we have uh, probably one of the most significant paintings in the sale, both in, in size and stature. This is a, a painting of Vaqueros by James Walker. Walker was an American 19th century painter who traveled west uh, as a part of the army fighting in the Mexican-American War. As a result, a lot of his paintings are these almost topographical battle scenes depicting you know, battles from that war. Uh, but he also uh, stuck around in California and painted a lot of like farming scenes, these landscapes. Here we have uh, vaqueros, or like Mexican cowboys, wrangling wild stallions. It's a truly marvelous piece, comes from a Connecticut collection. And, and while it does have some yellowing to the canvas and, and some surface staining, I think you know, any, any competent conservator could really bring new life to this painting. It's got a ten dollars to $15,000 estimate, and you're probably not gonna be able to see it in the video, so please do check out our catalog. It is signed and dated in the lower left. Above it, we have a nice sketch by the Norwegian painter Fritz Taulo. Uh, Vidar Poulsen, who's the, the leading expert on Taulo, suspects this work is from probably 1874 to 1876, and is a study for a larger work by Taulo from 1875. Uh, it depicts uh, an English channel scene, probably in England, but possibly Normandy, uh, and has inscriptions on the back in German. Comes out of an Upper East Side collection, really nice painting, with a four to $6,000 estimate. Popping here to the other side of the office. We have a painting by the Mexican painter Gustavo Montoya. Montoya, another artist we've, we've handled and done quite well with in the past. This work from 1961 is titled Niña y Niño, depicting children. Montoya's works frequently feature young children. Uh, this is very typical of his, of his style. Comes out of a Weston, Connecticut collection with, with a couple other works in the sale that we'll touch on and has a five to $7,000 estimate. 
On the other wall here behind the piano from that same Weston collection, we have another Mexican painting, this an oil on canvas by the painter Leticia Tarago. Tarago is maybe more known for her printed work, but often features these sort of surrealist portraits of women. This piece is titled La Mandolina, La Mandolina. It's from 1980 and has an $800 to $1,200 estimate. To its left, we have a nice tempera on board by the American artist John Wesley Chumley. Chumley's a southern painter. Here we have a porch scene. I really love the sort of photorealist detail of these chairs. This comes out of a New York collection with a 1,000 to 1,500 estimate. Above it, from a different New York collection, we have a nice lithograph poster by Picasso signed in the plate. Three to five hundred dollar estimate, but a nice period poster nonetheless. To its left, above the door here, we have a really lovely still life by the American painter Adelaide Palmer. Palmer with a Boston-based female artist painting in the late 19th century, is most known for her still lifes, uh, including this piece here of roses. Comes out of a Long Island collection with an eight to twelve hundred dollar estimate. To its left up top there, we have a nice little oil on board by Barker Fairley. Fairley was an English-born artist, most known for working in Canada. He sort of was a major influence and proponent of the Group of Seven. This work here is from 1971. It's titled Flood and Star, comes from a Maryland collection, and has a $1,000 to $1,500 estimate. Below it, we have two drawings by Ludwig Bemelmans, uh, most notably uh, the author of the Madeline series of children's books. He's a really beloved American illustrator. We have a Christmas scene and a scene from Newfoundland, probably of, of an airport or some sort of like boat terminal. Both really charming. Uh, he's, you know, really great with these sort of caricatures, depictions of figures. They both come out of the Long Island storage of the gallerist Ellen Mitchell. The small Christmas scene has an eight to $1,200 estimate and this Newfoundland scene that you're looking at now has a thousand to $1,500 estimate. To its left, or their left rather, we have the second of the two Hildebrandt paintings from an Upper East Side collection. This, a really marvelous impressionist portrait of a woman with a parasol. Hildebrandt is best uh, known as a portraitist and I think this work really demonstrates why. Not only is she painted in a really you know, expert way, but the background is just fantastic. I mean, even this parasol has tremendous use of color to sort of create this uh, really beautiful impressionistic feel. This work uh, has a four to six thousand dollar estimate and, and it truly is one of the nicest Hildebrands to come on the market in the past decade. Really exciting painting. Above it we have another exciting painting. Uh, a nice floral still life by the American artist Gershon Benjamin. Benjamin uh, was a close friend of Milton Avery's and I think sort of his work bears some resemblance to Avery's and it's, it's really flat use of color. He's a bit of an unsung hero of American painting because uh, when he was working, a lot of his sort of still lifes and, and scenes like this kind of were running in opposition to social realism and then later abstract expressionism. Uh, but one's come on the market fairly recently at an auction in New Jersey and done quite well. So we're hoping to, uh, to exceed expectations with our five to $7,000 estimate. Sliding down here, we have a rather charming beach scene by the French post-impressionist painter Paul-Michel Dupuis. This works from 1913 and is really trademarked Dupuis. Uh, a lot of his work features this girl in the, the red sort of stocking cap. Uh, we also have a nice hobby horse here and a little baby. It's a really charming French beach scene, uh, always a desirable subject matter. This comes out of a Long Island collection and has an eight to $12,000 estimate. Above it from the same Western Connecticut collection as, as the Montoya and the Tarago, we have this mixed media on board by the Mexican artist Alfredo Castaneda. This work is titled uh, Medita Bundo Dos. It's from 1968, and it's really trademarked Castaneda with this sort of surrealist figures, kind of in, I don't even know what you would call this background, but you've got hands here and a face. It's a really nice work, uh, preserved well behind glass with a four to $6,000 estimate. Above it, and, and I again suggest checking out the catalog in particular for this piece, we have one of the more curious lots in the sale, a watercolor from that same Ellen Mitchell storage as the two Bemelmans. Uh, it might say USA, it's a rather surrealist scene, but what makes it of particular interest, and I'm not sure if you'll be able to capture it too well, Steve, is on sort of the lower um, plane of the frame, it's signed Andy Warhol 82. So we have the work cataloged as signed by Warhol. Uh, obviously not necessarily what you'd think of as a Warhol, but that signature does look quite right. Um, the work has a thousand to $1,500 estimate.
And the last piece up here in the front gallery is a nice landscape by the American painter Charles Kalin. Like myself, Kalin's a native of Cincinnati and studied under Twachman, uh, sort of in that Duvenac tradition of, of Cincinnati painters looking to Germany. But he later settled in New York and, and ultimately Massachusetts, where he's, he's most known for his, his Rockport landscapes. Here we have a, a nice woodland scene in a, in a rather muted palette coming out of a New York collection with a $15 to $2,500 estimate. We have north of 140 fine art lots in this sale, so please do check out our catalog because I'm going to have to move quite quickly here to show you what we have hanging. We have a pair of watercolors by the Chilean artist Mario Torral, uh, above which we have a port scene by the American painter John Good. We have a nice ink on paper by the Greek painter Jean Ziron. Uh, on the other side of the mirror, we have, we have a second Ziron. We have a total of three in the sale. Uh, we have a couple works by Bud Hopkins, including this oil on paper here. Cool abstract from the uh, mid-century. Here's one of the more interesting lots in the sale. It's an exhibition poster uh, of a David Hammond's work, um, which is pen signed by the artist and dated 1994. We have some nice 19th century American drawings as well as a pair of dollar sign paintings by the sort of neo-pop artist Robin, Robin Morris. Just quickly want to point out we have a lot that features 19 volumes of uh, Christian Zervos's Picasso catalog Raisonne. They're all in pretty good condition. Um, and, and check out the catalog to see which specific volumes we have. Above it we have this massively large scale abstract by Toral, the, the artist of the two watercolors starting in this gallery comes out of a Western Connecticut collection. From that same collection, we have a Rex Clausen bowl, really charming artist frame, as well as a few works in this sale by the American painter Ernest Wendig, including this port scene. We have a collection of Cuba, uh, Cuban prints, nice work from the 80s, good abstract pieces as well as, if you can reach up to the top there, a really lovely pair of nudes by the American artist Byron Brown. We have another Byron Brown work in the sale, a still life, two works on paper. We have a couple abstracts by the American artist Florence Weinstein, as well as some good European scenes, this allegedly signed sort of Venetian landscape. This is an interesting painting by an artist named Fakanja, depicting the purchase of Manhattan. And here we have a nice oil on canvas of the peaceable kingdom after Hicks, uh, done in an appropriately folksy style, a really nice piece. Uh, there is a bit of loss to the frame, but we do have those pieces that have, that have fallen off. They'll be included with the lot. Above it, we have a European painting, 15th, 16th century, sort of, to my eyes, a bit of a northern uh, holy family scene on panel, it's a really neat painting. In a very different mode, we have two of the three lots in this sale by the French artist Gaston Cibre. He's known for his sort of southern French landscapes, and in this case, a still life. A nice scene of La Paz by the American artist George Elmer Brown. Just kind of touching on a nice pair of American paintings. This is by the artist Grossman a good decorative oil of putti, and a nice sort of lounging in a garden scene. Here we have a, another park scene, uh, this time by a German artist, Rochol, I think sort of complements the Hildebrandt in the first gallery quite well. And I'll wrap here simply for the sake of time with this nice oil on canvas by the American painter Milton Holm, which to me sort of, uh, channel some of Talo's palette and, and brushwork. Like I said, I barely scratched the surface of this sale. I've certainly missed some really interesting and compelling work, work worthy of attention. So please do check out our catalog at www.clarkny.com. And if you have any questions, don't hesitate to contact me at the gallery. Thanks. Hi, and welcome to our auction preview for the December 6th auction. I'm going to start here with this grouping of amber. Um, 
They have not been identified through any lab, but I do believe that at least three strands are absolutely authentic amber. The other two may be Bakelite, but these are all estimated together at age 1200. Here we have perfect holiday shopping opportunities. This is a pair of Paloma Picasso for Tiffany 18 karat gold X form earrings at three to 500. Here we have a beautiful 14 karat yellow gold and faceted blue topaz necklace Lavalier style with this drop pendant. Um, this is absolutely stunning. If we can just take a look here. This is 18 karat yellow gold with panels of diamond accents. A very Van Cleef and Arpel in my opinion. Apparently it's unmarked, but there could very well be a signature on here. This is estimated at four to 6,000. This is one of my favorite, favorite pieces in this auction. It is this Edwardian platinum pendant open work with the diamonds and sapphires. If we can just take a look here, if we can put it up to the light so you can just see how beautiful this is. It's really stunning. And this is estimated at 25 to 3,500. We have a pair, of, um, a pair of emerald and 14 karat gold hinged bracelets. Really quite nice with these prong set faceted gems. The two together at 500 to 700. Here we have a double strand pearl necklace with the 14 karat white gold floral form cat clasp with sapphires and diamonds. A perfect gift opportunity here is this 14 karat gold rope chain. We have this pair of Cartier earrings set with diamonds and colored gems. Really a wonderful size and they're beautifully made. All stamped Cartier, all the markings. Here's a pair of 14 karat yellow gold golf ball form cufflinks for anyone who loves playing golf, a perfect Christmas gift or holiday gift. Um, this is wonderful, wonderful hinged bracelet antique with the rose cut diamonds, it's stunning. The diamonds have such nice brilliance to them. They are old European cut, but it's absolutely gorgeous. From the same estate, we have this Victorian pendant. It is diamonds and silvered gold, but the, what's really nice is this little bird. So it's, it's typical Victorian, absolutely beautiful. We have this pair of signed German 18 karat gold and Malachite ear clips. We have this US two and a half dollar Indian head coin. I believe it's 1915, but you can check all the details on our website. This is a men's Balmain Mercier uh, bicolor 18 karat gold wristwatch. Really nice condition. It's a really handsome watch. Um, three to 5,000. This is a Notori um, sapphire and pearl necklace, and it does come with a lab certificate and the original receipt and the original box, and this is estimated at 1,000 to 1,500. One of my favorite lots in this auction is this absolutely stunning Tanzanite and diamond ring. It does come with the GI, GIA identification report. I'm just gonna slip it on my finger just so that you can see the size and absolutely how stunning, I mean, this is a beautiful color. It's this really rich, brilliant color and the diamonds are of a beautiful quality. This is estimated at two to 3,000. This is just a nice little sweet grouping of rings, 14 karat and 18 karat. We have a, an, a snake ring bypass style with enamel decoration. We have this pave pear-shaped diamond with a split shank, and then this little petite ring with enamel and a central pave diamond accent. We have this jouetier or buckle form 14 karat gold bracelet with these beautiful tassels and the diamond inlays to the closure. We have this 14 karat gold Cartier style cigarette holder with a band of diamonds and a band of rubies with the original little case. We have this antique diamond and emerald ring, really very sweet. This is a pair of signed 18 karat gold hoop earrings and they are by Henry Dunay. Wonderful quality, nice heavy. The textural design is absolutely beautiful, it's stunning three pins here. So we have the little Victorian heart pin. This is an enamel decorated and pearl stick um, bar pin. And then this faceted gem. And we have this signed opal ring. So it are these opal slabs with a diamond, um, all signed, really quite beautiful. We have this 14 karat gold bug brooch and it is set with diamonds and emerald cabochons. Really so sweet. It's a really nice quality with a lot, lot of textural finishes to the gold work. This came in on one of our Walk and Wednesday appraisal days. It is French and it is stunning. It is 18 karat gold and it has this central panel of diamonds and it is absolutely beautiful. Pair of 18 karat gold cufflinks, really quite nice. Perfect gift buying opportunity. This tricolor 18 karat gold hinged bracelet, 
rose gold, white gold, yellow gold set with pave diamonds. We have this engagement and wedding suite. So we have the central pear shaped diamond and a beautiful eternity band. So these two together at three to four to six thousand, I'm sorry. Here we have this wonderful 14 karat gold ring with the central colored gem cabochon surrounded by pave accent stones. Wonderful dome form ring set with diamonds and emeralds, a variety of cuts to each of the stones and it's really quite nice. We have this again, really beautiful um, colored stone surrounded by diamond accents, really quite nice, a striking ring. Signed 18 karat gold hinged bracelet, beautifully articulated with lapis lazuli and diamond accents. Again, beautiful textural finish to the gold work, beautifully articulated, and this is estimated at three to 5,000. For some lucky fellow in someone's life, this would be a perfect bracelet. Um, it is 14 karat gold, and it has diamond accents to many of the links. Um, I'm going to move on to some carved jade. So this isn't necessarily jewelry, but it's absolutely beautiful, and I'd like to showcase it. This is a carved jade pendant, but if you just look here, it's carved throughout and there's multi levels of carving. It's just absolutely beautiful and it's being sold with this carved jade finial. Here's a piece of jade that has been mounted as a brooch in 14 karat gold. Again, beautifully carved, beautiful color variations. You can take a look on the underside. It's absolutely stunning. I'm going to jump back to this ring. This is 14 karat gold with a panel of diamond accents. And in front is this very sweet, came in in our walk-in Wednesday, colored gem 14 karat gold ring, really quite nice. Out of a New Jersey estate, we have this 14 karat white gold. Again, Lavalier style necklace set with diamonds and colored gems. We have this men's ring set with a US gold coin, estimated at five to 700. A small French 18 karat gold coin purse out of a local estate really quite beautiful it can be worn as a pendant which is what i would recommend because it is really so sweet and in very good condition here we have a four-piece suite of turquoise and 14 karat gold these earrings are fantastic this ring is fantastic all pieces together this is a signed 18 karat gold harness racer with enamel decoration really quite sweet it's signed italian beautiful 18 karat gold brooch um floral design or floral swag with diamond accents. This I absolutely love. I think that this should be layered with other necklaces. It is 18 karat gold and has three diamond inlaid pendants. It's absolutely beautiful and I love it. Um, here we have a very sweet engagement ring. So this is 14 karat white gold with a central round brilliant cut flanked by diamond accents. We have a double strand pearl bracelet with a 14 karat gold and ruby and diamond clasp. I'm going to jump back this is a 14 karat gold art deco style line bracelet with rubies and diamonds. This is an Etruscan style 15 karat gold, English gold actually, hinged bracelet. Beautiful gold work to this piece. This is absolutely wonderful. It is an 18 karat gold brooch and it is dome form with these little accents, some diamonds, but everything is kind of in tremblant, so really everything wiggles a little bit. It's absolutely beautiful, really nice quality. I'm surprised that it isn't signed. We have these two rings together. So if you just take a look here, we have central pear shapes surrounded by marquee cut diamonds. The two together actually look great stacked. Those two together are at three to 5,000. This I believe may be Portuguese gold. It is 19 karat gold and has a central panel of diamond accents, floral decoration. It's beautiful out of a local estate. These two watches together, one Waltham, one Elgin, both are gold and both are early 20th century. We have this Hamilton Fin Omatic men's watch, 14 karat yellow gold at three to 500. And we have this bicolor Italian 18 karat gold bracelet, absolutely beautiful at four to 6,000. We have this Italian bracelet set with a variety of polished stones. We have jade and we have carnelian. It's beautiful at four to 600. We have this old European cut and platinum bracelet. So it's old European cut diamonds, bezel set in platinum. It does have a replaced 14 karat white gold clasp and this is estimated at three to 5,000. Another perfect holiday gift buying option is this pair of round brilliant cut diamond studs. They are approximately half a carat each. Very, really quite nice. 
and these are estimated at three to five hundred. We have this Tahitian pearl necklace with a white gold closure. Really a nice size, a larger size to the size to these pearls. We have a 14 karat white gold men's ring with diamond accents. We have this really beautiful 18 karat gold uh, split shank ring with woven diamond panels. A really quite nice Russian silver hinged box or case with the elephant, which is unusual. I've never seen one with an elephant before but it opens and it reveals a, a gold wash. The interior is really very nice. Here's a men's tag here, a Carrera watch, and this is in stainless and 18 karat gold, and it does appear to be in working condition. It's very quite, really quite nice at 1,000 and 1,500. We have this grouping of rings. So we have another um, Henry Junet piece in the sale. So this is 18 karat gold with sapphires and diamonds. We have this really beautiful cocktail ring, and it is 18 karat gold with two emeralds surrounded by marquee cut diamonds. We have this 18 karat gold turquoise ring with a surround of diamonds and this does the, actually, this portion can be removed and it can actually be worn as a pendant, which is unusual, but a nice feature. We have this 14 karat gold amethyst ring, so a large faceted amethyst, really nice in size. So really quite pretty, I'll wear that. Um, and then we have this men's 14 karat gold checkerboard ring with diamonds and sapphires. And we have this 14 karat gold bypass ring with diamonds, sapphires, and rubies. We have this colored gem cabochon with diamonds. So it's a blue colored cabochon flanked by diamonds at five to 700. We have a Cartier ring and this is 18 karat gold with peridot. And then we have this beautiful ring. I believe this to be a tourmaline and it is flanked by diamond accents. And we have this 18 karat gold grouping. So we have an 18 karat gold duck with a turquoise and a colored gem eye. We have this Italian house charm and it is 18 karat gold. We have this wonderful ladies pocket watch. So we have some opals verso, which is nice in this fleur de lis pattern. We have this pair of 14 karat gold earrings and they are central clusters of diamond accents set in 14 karat gold. We have this Rolex. So this is a ladies Rolex and it was retailed by Tiffany and company and it has a diamond surround to the face. This is absolutely wonderful. So I'm going to start by saying that the necklace itself is 14 karat gold and they must have had these lions made to match this absolutely stunning Hammerman Brothers 18 karat yellow gold pendant. Um, so I believe it's a later marriage of parts, but it's absolutely beautiful, large in size, and this is estimated at four to 6,000. This is 14 karat gold chain link necklace, beautiful at two to 3,000. We have this Rolex Cellini watch, and I believe that this can be either for men or women because I would definitely wear this. Absolutely beautiful. We have the ever popular Cartier tank watch in stainless. This is an unusual piece that came out of a local New Rochelle estate. This is a artist signed bracelet articulated, but it's got a, um, a sculptural perspective to it in this stand with kind of the people viewing it, but you can take it off and now it's a bracelet and it's beautiful. It has figures and lapis and pearls and it is sterling in 18 karat gold. So let's see, then it can just go back on this nice little stand, which is nice. Out of a Manhattan estate, we have this large Southwest signed turquoise bracelet, cuff bracelet, really quite beautiful. We have this beautifully articulated ladies 18 karat gold bracelet with the diamonds. We have an Angela Cummings 18 karat gold bracelet. So it has the inlay to this side of this feature and then on the alternate side, it's mother of pearl. This is estimated at four to 6,000. From the same estate, we have these two 14 karat gold bracelets with rubies and pearls, floral design. We have this Temple St. Clair 18 karat gold mounted and rock crystal carved moon pendant. I just wanna make sure you're able to see the face because it's really very sweet. This is a 14 karat gold necklace, beautifully articulated, and it is white gold on one side and yellow gold on the alternate side, which is nice. From the same estate is this polished blue topaz necklace with 14 karat gold diamond inlaid closure, and then it has these nice little diamond inlaid rondelles to the stones that would fall closest to your neck. This is a 14 karat gold Italian necklace with the gold mounted coin and diamond accents to these links. Really quite nice at 1,000 to 1,500. We have this pair of Southwest cuff bracelets oversized with bears, and this one has bear claws from the same collection as this bracelet, and there are many other bracelets from the same estate. Finishing it up for the jewelry, we have this wonderful um, scarf clip. 
So this one is a horse, it's 14 karat gold, it has sapphire eyes, and it comes with this beautiful silk scarf. Moving on to the silver, we have this four-piece Christoffel silver plate service. It's stunning. One of the nicest examples of Christoffel I've seen. It has these beautiful feet, kind of this foliate form design, engine turned to the body of each vessel, gold wash to the interior, there is a familial crest. These pieces all together at five to 700. We have this Allen Adler Sterling Flatware set with hand hammered finish, really quite nice. We have this wonderful serving tray. So this is Sterling, it is signed. It is reminiscent of Kirk. It is unsigned by Kirk, but if we take a look here, we have these castles, the floral repousse work that they're known for, a beautiful engine turn design to the interior. It's absolutely beautiful. Really, really quite nice. We have this Kay Fisker for a Mickelson Sterling pitcher at 1,000 to 1,500 out of a local estate. We have this wonderful grouping of silver so it's all kind of unusual pieces that were put together so we have some Gorham Versailles we have some Kirk we have some Jensen etc all the details are available on our website one of the stars of this sale is this James Dixon and Son of Pairn out of a local estate it's absolutely beautiful all the pieces are marked it's in good condition each of these arms come out each one has a basket there's alternating designs to each basket so these are set atop of the arms and then the next arm the baskets are balancing so it's really quite nice we have a lot of purses in this sale so this is just one grouping of many from the same estate. So a lot of these are these mesh purses. These are all silver. So this is just one example from the collection, but there's Whiting and Davis. There's antique beaded purses. So check our website if you like bags. We have this beautiful French 950 silver jardiner or planter. Um, this is just a wonderful example. And by Consigner Provenance, this was purchased oriz originally Sotheby's. Um, it is all signed. It's beautiful. It's in good condition. It does have the silver plate liner. It's just, it's just a wonderful example of antique French silver. And this is estimated at two to 3,000. So we have this Herod's English silver teapot. We have this wonderful mid 18th century tankard. Um, so it is marked. This is nice. I just want everyone to take a look at this little heart to the, the how the handle terminates, but it's marked to the underside. So it's marked here, it's marked to the body of the vessel, and it's really quite nice and in good condition, eight to 1200. We have this pair of claret jugs. So these are German 800 silver mounted with the figural finials. They're quite nice, reticulated not, uh, design to the bottom of the vessels. This is a silver plate mounted urn. It's just so attractive at four to 600. From the same estate as our Christoffel tea service is this three piece Christoffel serving piece. So it's all the terrines with lidded terrines. And again, with wonderful floral form finials. And if you see here, we have a very similar floral finial and they're both Christoffel, really beautiful examples. It would be really nice if these, this set was able to go to the same buyer. This is a grouping of Cartier and 800 silver. So this is a geode with Cartier animals. This is a little spaniel, monked Cartier. This bear is also on a, uh, a specimen and he would be marked underneath his foot. And I can't, I don't wanna pull him off, so I, I can't say for sure it's Cartier, but I would make the assumption it's from the same estate. And then we have this 800 silver boar. But this guy, he fell off and he's clearly marked on the underside. All these pieces together at four to 600. We have this French 18th century silver example, beautiful lidded vessel with the underplate. It's really quite nice. We have this pair of Tiffany and Company um, oversized sterling creamer and lidded sugar. Really nice with the Greek key design. We have this Tiffany and Company pedestal bowl. Really nice. So we have this really nice example of Repousse silver, so this is just an American silver pitcher with beautiful repousse floral work, but it is accompanied by these examples of Kirk, who was who is one of the the most prominent in the repousse work, and then this wonderful little inkwell. This is a sweet little meat tray that would be perfect for holidays. Um, it is American. It's sterling. Came from a local estate at four to six hundred. This is a La Paglia sterling gravy boat. Really, again, nice for the holidays. 
This came in our in our most recent walk in Wednesday. This is a Reed and Barn Francis the First Sterling tea service. So the tea service itself, as well as the tray, is sterling. This is estimated at six to nine thousand. And last but not least, we have this wonderful sterling candelabra, multiple arms, beautiful scroll and floral work. It's absolutely stunning at $1,500, and that wraps it up, and we hope to see you on December 6th.